Now let's see. Oh my god. You're giving Espoir du Vide the power to create a boyfriend. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir du Vide and today I'm going to play a game called Dr. Frank's Build a Boyfriend. Where we're going to help Dr. Frank build the perfect boy. Ah. Uh? I love this whimsical music. Once upon a time, in the treacherous mountain hillside of Geniel, Geniel? Geniel? There lived a wondrous, amazing, and most incredible scientist named Dr. Frank. And yes, he was a doctor. He finished, like, half of both of his doctrines before he got kicked out. That totally counts. Can everyone lay off about this? <clears throat> anyway... The super awesome Dr. Frank spent his days toiling away at his research, pursuing his lifelong dream of bringing people back from the dead. It wasn't for any sentimental reason. There wasn't some long-lost loved one he wanted to bring back or anything. Is that totally the case, Doctor? No! This was for a much more noble pursuit, the aim of achieving mankind's scientific knowledge. And yet, it was the same research that caused the local villagers and even the weak-minded university men to fear him. <gasps> because they were stupid and jerks and they couldn't possibly understand the sheer genius of Dr. Frank's work. But it was no matter, for the genius doctor was an honorable and humble man who simply continued his most critical research, even if it meant he was completely alone. Well, okay, he wasn't totally alone. Iggs was there, and he was a fine assistant, even though he keeps asking for raises. <laughs> but the point is, one day, a sudden knock came at the door. And the scientist opened it to find a beautiful man with a radiant glow standing there. In his heart, he felt a strange, previously unknown feeling begin to form as the man opened his mouth and said, <laughs> Yo, what's up? Name's Dominic. You're that freak that got kicked out of Hindenburg U for those weird death experiments, right? Did something happen to, to Gorgeous Specimen and we're trying to bring him back to life? It was like an angel had been sent to meet him, and now that angel was asking about his research. Mm. No matter what Dr. Frank did, he couldn't stop his heart from pounding. <gasps> the good doctor invited the man in, and they quickly got to know each other. And as the days passed, the man's visits grew longer and longer. Their relationship also grew into something romantic. Oh, oh! did something happen to this person? Are we trying to bring this person back? Dr. Frank had never given his heart to anyone before, but maybe for him, maybe for this man named Dominique. Hmm? Three months later... Oh, wait, what? What happened? Why is Dr. Frank upset? Who hurt you, Dr. Frank? I never want to see another beautiful boy ever again. Dr. Frank, are you still in there? No one is here to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. The door opened and my assistant, Iggs, walks into my room. I try to bury myself further into the sheets, hoping that maybe he won't see me. <laughs> Instead, he rudely opens the blinds. It's been a week, Dr. Frank. So, I can be sad as long as I want. I've lost the love of my life. <laughs> Frank. Doctor. He waves his arms in the air out of frustration. Look, I know he meant a lot to you. I mean, he was your first, right? Hmm. And no one likes being d Oh, he was only dumped? The Why is he making a new boyfriend? And no one likes being dumped, especially when it's so out of the blue like that. But sitting in your room all day crying into your bed sheets isn't going to help you recover. You need to- Leave me alone! He said I was cute! I was in love! He was my boyfriend! You couldn't possibly know what I'm going through. Actually, Dr. Frank, I've gone through a fair share of breakups myself. You do know how I met my current boyfriend, right? So, yes, I do know what you're... <laughs> how could you say that to me? My love was special, unique. It wasn't like your love. It was destiny. 
I roll further into my blankets, breaking my sight line with this egregious interloper. <sighs> I don't get paid enough for this. Dr. Frank! He starts to pull the blanket from off the bed, against which I double my rolling efforts to keep him at bay. I didn't come in here to fight with you. Can you stop? We have a problem. I can feel his grip lessen, and I peek my head out from the blanket cocoon to look at him. He's holding a piece of paper in his hands, with a weird look on his face. I tentatively grab it and start reading. Tomorrow's the Hindenburg University Conference. Mm. You know, the one people travel from all over the country to see. Mm. Well, the conference schedule was posted today. Mm. And... What the heck is this? Right in front of me in plain letters is... Returning from death to life, a breakthrough by... <gasps> Dominic Nylion! He's... Oh, he stole his stuff! Oh! 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 That rat! <gasps> Resurrection? But... But that's... My research! But it's... Dominic presenting it? I... This... This can't be right! He wouldn't be presenting my research under his own name. I tried to tell you last week that I noticed him leaving with some folders the day he dumped you, but you were too busy crying into a gallon tub of ice cream to listen. No, this couldn't. He... He... That butthole! First he breaks my heart and dumps me out of the blue. And even after he called me... Babe. I mean, how could he say that and then... Do this! He takes my research! My baby! And now he's presenting it to those jerkwads at Hindenburg University? Like they hadn't rejected my same exact proposals years previous? Why did he get accepted while I was kicked out? Well, your thesis project did bite the headmaster's hand clean off, Dr. Frank. It was one time! <sighs> Whatever. That's not important right now. What's important is that Dominic is about to claim my research as his own! Maybe even... Maybe... Maybe this was his plan all along. I mean, but we were soulmates. I just knew we were. But now... Now I don't know. I crumpled the paper in my hands, writhing with angst. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to let him get away with this. That butthole, that butthole ruined my life. He's taken my baby, my research. I throw the blanket off of me, leaping to my feet. Eggs? Yes, doctor. Get the shovel. I'm going to show that bumhole what happens when you pee off a scientist. <laughs> Later, that night. Frank. Doctor. Doctor Frank. I'm pretty sure this is illegal. I look up at him, holding a particularly interesting specimen in my hand. Does this look like the arm of a hot boy to you? This is illegal. A lightning strike touches down a good while's off, as if to exaggerate his statement. No one's using these. It's fine. We are desecrating graves. I mean, I've helped you with a lot of your crazier experiments, but this... This is where I draw the line. Ugh! I throw the arm I'm holding up to him, quickly climbing out of the grave. Ugh. So, yeah, maybe there's a chance this isn't completely legal. But... This is a historical moment, Diggs. If we are going to create the first artificial life form and show up that butthole and those idiots at the university, we can't skip on anything. We're not just making the world's first artificial life form here. We're pushing the boundaries of human capability. We're going to create the world's hottest boy. <laughs> 
Well, if you would succeed, Doctor, may I meet him? I'm quite a connoisseur of hot boys. And then Dominic will take one look at him and then realize that he was a fool for leaving me, and an even bigger fool for taking my research, because now I have someone even harder than him. Mm. How honorable, Dr. Frank. Iggs appears to be trying to find the perfect position to hold the specimen up with the least amount of bodily contact. So you see, people who advanced the boundaries of human capability were never stopped by silly things like laws. Now quick, I heard that Mr. Lance had a pretty big... <clears throat> Eggplant. We can use that. <laughs> Suddenly, something moves in the underbrush. Mm -hmm. Eek! What's that? Hey, watch what you're doing. You almost dropped our precious spoils. But... But didn't you hear that, Dr. Frank? I think there's something... Ah. Again, a noise breaks out from behind us. Well, then hurry up and find that... Well, then hurry up and find that cock-a-doodle-doo! Dr. Frank, behind you! It better not be a monster! I quickly spin around, a sudden ominous feeling in the pit of my stomach. Oh, there's a man I've never seen before standing there. Is he, like, a guard? He's got hot boy eyes. I'm sorry, was I disturbing something? Oh, ha uh, ha no! <laughs> I step back into Iggs, hoping that this stranger can't see any of our souvenirs. I'm so sorry, it was his idea and... I punch him, quickly, before he can say something stupid. This causes him to recoil, and the arm we had been arguing over, not a few minutes earlier, lands on the ground with a loud thud. The man takes a clear look at what dropped on the ground and looks back at me. What was his idea? The man takes a step closer to us. I quickly position myself in front of the dropped arm, holding my breath. Oh, f- Eggs! <laughs> You're so funny! Such a kidder! <laughs> wow, it sure is cold out here all of a sudden. Well, we should be going now. I grab our bag of loot and dash away as fast as my legs can take me. I hear Iggs yelling after me, telling me to slow down. It was nice to meet you, Dr. Frank. Who is this mysterious revolutionary girl Utena looking fellow? If I get arrested, I'm suing you. <laughs> Hunks galore. Cutest boys ever. Doc, may I, may I borrow some of your books? Man plus sparkles equals sparkly man. I dump the bag's contents onto the table, body parts falling out and bouncing off the floor. Ugh. I said I'm going to sue you. Hmm, I think we have just enough. But we didn't get any boing loings. Doctor? Dr. Frank, do we even need all these? Why did you take so many to begin with? Iggs, we are making art here. We can't just use any body part we find. We must only use the absolutely most beautiful pieces. I pick up some arms to take a closer look. Like these, see? They're absolutely gorgeous. Look at that keratin. Or oh, actually, hmm. Not as beautiful as the one you dropped, but I suppose you're right. They're beautiful enough. You say that as if I dropped it of my own free will and not because someone punched me. Hmm. Now where did we put the... Hmm? Ah! Ah! Shoot. I turn to look at my assistant. We have a problem. Like how we just desecrated dozens of graves, hacked off and stole family members' body parts, and then were spotted doing so? Well, no, not that. We... I pause, unsure of how to say this. We didn't grab any... Any... You know... I gesture downward shyly, hoping he'll get the reference. I have no idea what you're trying to say. Richards! We didn't grab any Richards! Oh. Well. This is terrible. We even had the perfect specimen with Mr. Lance's cucumber. How am I supposed to make Dominic jealous of me now? 
Dr. Frank, do you honestly think that is what's going to make Dominic jealous of you? Yes. Mm. We need to go back. Absolutely not. He blocks my exit, making sure I can't retrieve any other body parts. Gah, we don't have time for this. Fine. We need to, uh... I hate saying this. I'll just... I'll just improvise. I don't like where this is going. It's fine. It's totally fine. We're still making something beautiful here. We... We just need to be creative. Let our creative juices flow. Now, let's see. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh dear. All right. You're giving espoir du vide. <laughs> the power to create a boyfriend. I wonder how hard this must have been to program. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> I have no idea what that word is. Wait a minute. Double trouble? Oh my gosh, why? Chunky Gordo. Just like my animes. Does that mean tentacles? That should be okay. Perfect. Um, Dr. Frank, what were those phallus options just now? Eggs, open the roof doors. I need a little atmosphere as I make history here. He sullenly goes to the crank, reluctantly beginning to turn it. Ooh. The ceiling creaks open, showing the dark, turbulent skies and cold, harsh rain above us. I raise my arms up, catching the coldness in my outstretched hands. There's a strange sensation in my stomach, a knotting of excitement and anger. It's rising throughout my body, invigorating me with a newfound strength. <laughs> eggs, eggs! This is it. It's perfect. The skies. They know. They know that we're about to do the impossible. They know that we're about to. <laughs> Nothing can stop me now. Nothing can stop us. Something's totally gonna stop them, isn't it? I'm... I'm going to show Dominic that I don't need him. That I'll never need anyone like him in my life ever again. He and his kind will become obsolete. We're going to better the world, Diggs. We're going to make it so that no one will ever have their hearts broken again. Dr. Frank, you're scaring me. I can do this. I can... I can make the most beautiful boyfriend ever! Ouch! We work hard through the night, accumulating enough energy for the lightning storm to inject into our subject. We almost fail, multiple times, the body not holding the energy as well as it should. But it was no matter. My sheer genius, hard work, and determination carried us through the many hours of grueling surgery. We had done it. We had created the world's most beautiful boy. <laughs> okay. He's all right. Why is there a graph drawn? Hold on. Hold on. Let's get get a peek at this. <laughs> the the, the, the <laughs> Oh, oh. Is one of his hands on backwards? I can't tell. He's He's okay. He's, he's all right. He's, why is there a graph drawn on his stomach? Hmm. Dr. Frank, he's kind of ugly. Don't say that to him. You'll hurt his feelings. And I'm sure he's beautiful to someone. No, what am I thinking? I made him. He's beautiful. And beauty is relative. Anyway. Hmm. Monster. Of course. Especially with his, uh... What exactly is that on his abdomen? <laughs> it's a... It's a... It's a... <clears throat> it's his... Uh, 128 pack. I figured that the more packs you have, the sexier you are. 
Oh, doctor. Oh my gosh. So I added a lot. Mm, Frank. Doctor! Doctor, Frank, you, uh, you took an anatomy class, right? <coughs> I, well, I guess, technically. Maybe? I don't even know what to say. <laughs> he spoke! Did you hear that, Iggs? My boyfriend spoke! Your... what? My boyfriend? Haven't I been saying that this whole time? You've been saying you were going to make a boyfriend, not your boyfriend. Of course I'm making my ultimate boyfriend. Look at us. Oh. I wrap my arms around the monster to show Iggs just what I mean. Hee hee. Hee hee. Soft. Ah. He returns the hug, lifting me off the ground and nearly breaking my bones in the process. God, see? He's... God, I can't breathe. He's so strong. That's... that's sexy. Right? Ugh, monster, drop him. You drop him right now. The monster lets go of me. I painfully hit the ground. Dr. Frank, are you alright? Ha <laughs> uh, of course. Because my boyfriend just hugged me. Dr. Frank, please stop. Hehe, <laughs> cute. Duh. Eggs, eggs, did, did you just hear? Dr. Frank, please calm down. He's the perfect boyfriend. Eggs, eggs, look, okay, look. I ran up next to my boyfriend, wrapping my arms around his waist. We look good together, like, would this make Dominic jealous? I don't know if jealous is the word for it. <laughs> the monster then leans over and gives me another hug, this time not as painfully. Oh, he's a hugger. That's the best, the best ultimate boyfriend. Papa is soft. Eh. <laughs> uh, no, uh, please don't call me that. I love my papa. Please, stop. That's, uh, well, that must be a glitch. <laughs> Papa is soft. No, no, I'm your boyfriend. Repeat after me. Boyfriend. Papa likes hugs. Doc Dr. Frank, please make him stop. Uh, don't worry, we can train him out of that, probably. It'll probably take some time, which we probably don't have. Hee <laughs> hee. It doesn't matter, as long as he doesn't talk, it should be fine. He can still be my boyfriend. And let's get moving anyway. If we leave now, we can easily make it to the university square before the presentations start. Boyfriend, let's go. We're going on a field trip. Yay. Field trip. I begin to lead him by the hand, wondering how we were going to navigate the narrow stairs leading from my secret lab. Um... Surely you're not going to take him in, into town like that. What do you mean? Well, I mean he's naked. How else are they going to see his beauty then? He's going to get arrested for public indecency before you can even make it to the conference. Fair point. Fine, so we'll dress him. Hmm. I made him pretty big. You did. Hmm. I'm not sure if I have any clothes that will fit him. Mm hmm? Hmm. Dr. Frank, you need to dress him. Oh, okay. I guess I'll just be creative. Objective. Dress your boyfriend. Oh? What's in here? A locked cupboard. I had thrown all of Dominic's things in here after he left me. I don't want to throw them out, just in case he came running back to my arms, realizing what a mistake he had made. Hmm. It's been a week, and still no signs of him running back into my good graces, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, maybe something in the bedroom? Closet? I don't want to open these. The skeletons I have stored in here are going to fall out. Packing was never my strong suit. Alright, anything in here? A messy assortment of worn clothes. I still have a while until laundry day. The only thing that would fit my monster would be... Check itself before wrecks itself. <laughs> I pick up my old nightshirt. Perfect, this'll fit. 
but I'm still missing some clothing articles. None of these pants will fit him. Hmm. Blanket? A big comfy bed fit for only the best of the best. And by the best of the best, I mean me. Is that cute little piggy? It's my oldest friend, Dr. Oink. Dominique didn't find her very cute. In hindsight, maybe it was never meant to be. <laughs> Meaty Man Monthly. Strictly for research purposes. Hmm. I pick it up and add it to my inventory. Just in case. I made this for my midterm project. We were supposed to make a weed killer. I ended up creating something that makes weeds grow at an almost comical rate. On top of that, I'm either deathly allergic to this or it's poisonous. Either way, I don't want to pick this up unless I need to. Pick it up? No, 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 no. <laughs> I love myself. I don't want to pick up the weed grower, but it's good to know it's there. Let's see, anything I could possibly use? It's Susie, my thesis project for my PhD program. He's named after the black-eyed Susan. Look, I built him to specifically lust after the flesh of man. Yes, he's going to bite. That's kind of in his nature. There was no need to kick me out of the program for it, and he even only bit someone once. That's pretty good for a man-eating plant. Is... what are you guys doing? He's got a little crown. Ah, don't squish those. They're the tenants. Mrs. Pretty Princess, Mr. Handsome Prince, Mr. Slightly Too Devoted Knight, Mr. Inappropriately Dressed Butler, and Mr. Her Majesty's Pet. No, no, they don't pay any rent, unfortunately. I pick up yesterday's newspaper. Annual Hindenburg University Conference sent to a set to astonish. Hmm. 1884. Additional sightings of undead creatures. Travelers cautioned. Sightings of undead creatures? This button was set to move the bookshelf, revealing the passage to my secret lab. But I got lazy and just kept it open all the time now. Heh! <laughs> A comically large dictionary. It claims that it can translate any script known and unknown to man. Pretty useful. But also, painfully heavy. I refuse to carry this around if I don't have to. Pick it up? No, thank you. Hmm, none of these would fit the monster, though. Naturally, his feet are really big. Hmm. Shoot. But what am I supposed to do? The only person who would have shoes that would fit him is... Dominic. Ah. Oh, he had left behind a pair of his shoes after the breakup. But in a fit of rage, I had thrown them, along with all his other crap, inside the entryway cupboard and threw away the key. Crap. Oh. Okay. I need to find something to open it with. Either smash it in or pry the door off. Hmm. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I use this? Using all the strength I can muster, I pry the cupboard door off its hinges. Gah! There, it's open. That was almost as hard as opening that jar of premium bubblegum jam last week. Rummaging inside, I find his shoes. Ha! Ah, what a butthole. Hmm. I can't believe he's really gone. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. I had been okay by myself. I was a genius, surrounded by those who couldn't appreciate the beauty and grace of my work. Alone. Misunderstood. I had convinced myself I was okay like this. I had my future all planned out. I was going to die as an unknown genius, someone ahead of his time. But then... Dominique. Ah, he's ogre-faced. You're like an ogre. The way he had looked at me, at my research. I didn't even know it was possible that someone could potentially understand me. He knew what my work meant, what I meant. But he left. And I was alone again. And now, this life I had chosen for myself was unbearable. The shoe's leather is rough on my hands. I should get this back to Eggs and the monster. I pull out my bedshirt and move it to put it on my boyfriend. What are you doing? What? I'm clearly giving my boyfriend a shirt. That's what you wanted, right? To abide by public decency laws and all that other crap. Well, I mean, don't you have anything fancier? Look, this is the only thing I own that will fit him. Ah, uh, you can spruce it up at least. I mean, it has blood? Are those blood stains on the front? It's coffee! And what? You want me to spruce it up? What, what does that even mean? I'm pretty sure that's not coffee, Dr. Frank. 
Uh, do you own a tie or a bow tie or something? Uh, besides the one I'm wearing. No, and I can't take this off. It'll ruin my look. Hmm. Well, then you'd better find something else to go with it. Here, have this back. You'll probably need to combine this with something else. Oh, okay. Ah, meaty men. Yes, I get it. I slide up towards Susie, keeping my head low. Hey, kid, wanna see something cool? The plant hisses at me as I bring out a certain magazine. It goes silent as it sees the sparkling muscles on the cover. I can accidentally leave this behind if I'm able to get closer to certain gardening equipment. He grabs the magazine in his jaws, opening it up to a full spread image. He no longer pays me any mind. Oh, he's blushing. Can I have that little ribbon? Give me. I should use this opportunity to grab the shovel. Oh, the shovel? Oh, I don't want the shovel. I want the ribbon. I want the bow. I managed to sneak around the distracted Susie and grab the shovel. I, I want I want the ribbon. Or right, whatever. Oh, I didn't go in the dining room. Ooh, what's this? A nice fancy napkin. It's completely pristine. Because, you know, I've never used it. I decide to pick it up, just in case. Oh, can I combine this with this? Yeah! Ha-ha! <laughs> A nice cabinet filled with expensive old dishes. They were my grandmother's. She used to threaten to cut off my ears if I dropped any of these. Here you go, fancy shirt. Shirt, shirt. Well, I can only just barely make out the coffee stains from back here. Hmm. 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 You know what? Let's just make sure no one touches him during the presentation for health precautions. Oh, I got some shoes. I found shoes that will fit my boyfriend. That's great. Shoes. 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 Oh, what else? Need some pants. A decent, decent pair, pair of, of pants. pants. <gasps> oh, okay. Immaculate rose bushes. The flowers in the church never used to be this beautiful. Strange. Can I... A handful of graves that we visited the previous night. Wish I could have grabbed Mr. Lance's... Lance. Well, I had the chance, though. <laughs> Lance, I get it. Church? Why would I go in here? Ooh, what's this? A nice batch of roses and thorny vines sit before the altar. The Atlan religion uses roses as their center point. Wait a minute. But didn't this used to be a Coldian church? Strange. Hmm. Ooh! Pants! These pair of pants! A donation box that holds a large collection of clothing. This is probably for the needy. Hmm. I see a large pair of pants that could most likely accommodate... ...a large member. Well, I think I qualify as needy in some definitions of the word. I'll just... I grab the pair of pants and try to stuff them into my pockets, or as much as possible. They don't fit. The legs are hanging out. Eh, close enough. What is up with this mural? It's an elaborate stained glass window. It shows a sad-looking boy surrounded by a black basilikin. Basiliskin. Basiliskin? What crap? I've never understood how anyone can believe in such illogical stories. What dim books? A large variety of books adorn the bookshelf. They look really old, but well cared for. Ah, even with my vast spring of knowledge, I can't read any of the book titles. What language is this even? Hmm. As I turn to leave, with my contraband pants in tow, except... Oh! No, oh, I see we meet again. Good morning, Mr. Frank. Doctor. Excuse me? I'm Dr. Frank. Oh. Well, then please do forgive me, Dr. Frank. It's nice to finally meet you. My name is Silios. My name is Silios. I just moved here. Mm. I took over the care of the church from the last priest. Mm. Mm. I see you found something of use in the donation box. I, uh, 
<laughs> Dr. Frank, no worries. That's what they're there for. If you have found use in them, then they were destined to go with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, thanks. He gives me a cute smile. Wait, uh, I mean a sickly sweet smile. Since I've just moved here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was hoping that someone might be able to show me around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I gotta go. Oh, I ran out of the church as fast as possible. Phew, made it. He just about cornered me. Gotta keep an eye out for that guy. He's suspicious. Oh, is he, is he not even gonna realize that? Oh, back to house. I have some pants. These pair of pants. I pull out the pants I found. I can't believe you actually found huge, weird, vegetable-specific appropriate pants. And where exactly did you find those? The church! I... I don't even want to know how they ended up there. Pants! Pants! Solomon, Solomon Grundy, Grundy want pants, pants too! Is that it? That's it. He's ready to go. Come on, let's go, boyfriend. Dr. Frank, Dr. Frank, please wait. We don't have time for this, Iggs. The conference is starting in a few minutes, and my boyfriend isn't there. But the sutures. Leading my boyfriend by the arm, I slam open the front door. To my dismay, standing there is... Oh. Oh, Dr. Frank. Ah! Ah! Uh, I hope now's not a bad time. Ah! Uh, Mailed! Field trip, field trip. Who's this? This is, uh... Wait a minute. Maybe this would be a good opportunity to perfect the presentation I'll be giving at the conference. Ahem. This dashing, handsome, absolutely sexy fellow here... Hmm... Is... My... Boyfriend! Papa! Yeah. Uh. No, uh... Don't say that. I love my papa. Hi. I, I'm not into that, I swear. <laughs> There's no need to hide your interests, Dr. Frank. I'm not into that. Oh. My boyfriend suddenly moves on his own, waddling up to where the new neighbor is standing. Ah. Uh. Oh. Hello, Mr. Dr. Frank's boyfriend. What's your name? Ah. Uh. <laughs> you seem like a very happy fellow. I'm glad that we were able to meet. I hope you treat Dr. Frank well. He seems like a nice, cute fellow. Ah. My boyfriend suddenly clamps Silas Silios on the shoulders, his face intense. Mama! But <laughs> Stop doing that! I am so, so sorry. Mama! Mama! <laughs> your boyfriend is so cute, Dr. Frank. I wouldn't mind being your mother if you needed one. He doesn't need a mother, or even a papa for that matter. No, papa! Mama! Gah! I don't have time for this. We're going. I reach behind me grabbing my boyfriend's arm, to shove past Silios and make our way to the Grand Conference. Except... Does his arm come off? Ooh. The arm doesn't quite have the resistance I'm expecting. Instead, I look behind me and see that I'm holding half of an arm. This is Dr. Frank! I had ripped my boyfriend's arm off! I slam the door shut, ignoring the muffled noises I can hear from the other side. Mailed! What time is it? The conference started about five minutes ago. I look down at the arm in my hands. The skin seems to be slipping off. It looks like it's rotting. What do you mean it's rotting? Well, it is dead flesh. We didn't soak it in formalin or anything. That would have made it look hideous. I can't work with hideous parts, Iggs. Field trip? We'll just sew on another one, really quick. Go fetch me one of the other fine, but still slightly uglier specimens from the lab. Mm. 
eggs. Um, please don't yell at me. I got rid of the extras. What? I returned them back to the graves. I was feeling so guilty. You, we had desecrated people's graves for those pieces, and you weren't even using them. The least I could do was return them. Ah. Well, what the heck are we supposed to do now? Bring my ultimate boyfriend on stage while he's got a gaping arm wound dripping all over the place? It would match the bloodstains on his shirt, at least. For the last time, it's coffee! Ah. I have to calm down. The conference just started, and it'll go on for another two hours. Dominic's presentation isn't until the end, anyway. We'll just crash his presentation. Hmm. So, we need to dig up another arm. Again? No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. What else am I paying you for, Iggs? Go dig up that arm. Ah. Uh, angry. Bad. My boyfriend inserts himself between Iggs and I, cutting off any argument that we might have started. Hmm. Hmm. Fine. I'll do it. You stay here and babysit. What a thing to say about your boyfriend. Mm. I leave. <laughs> Objective. Find your boyfriend a new arm. All right. Oh. Well, hello there. Oh, he already has a shovel. Crap. I made eye contact with him. Ah, um... It's nice to see you again, Mr. Frank. Doctor! Oh, please forgive me. That was awfully rude, especially after you took the time to correct me the previous time. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Mm, mm Uh, well... If you ever think of anything, feel free to let me know. Mm. Suspicious. I, uh... He's probably gonna say that he can't do it while I'm here. Mm -mm. <laughs> I can't just start digging up body parts with him standing there. Hmm. Perhaps I could create some sort of distraction within the church. Is that pepperoni? His nipples are pepperoni slices. Mm hmm. I figured that's what those were. Yeah. Okay, but why? Why not? Because n nipples usually aren't made of pizza toppings. My dear Iggs, you're living in the past. This is cutting-edge nipple technology we're working with here. <laughs> Ouch! My boyfriend has the best nipples in the world. They're meaty, they have enhanced flavors, they taste like pizza. I mean, yeah, yeah I guess... I guess, okay. Of course. Ah, Dr. Frank, you're back. Hmm. Did I get it right this time? Uh, yes, you you did. Is there anything I can help you with? Yeah, this used to be a Chaldean church. Why'd the church change? The altar inside. It has roses. Indeed, I worked hard to cultivate them, so I'm especially glad to see them blooming so beautifully. Oh, are we gonna have to use, like, the plant stuff on his roses? Oh, that would be a shame. Except roses are the symbol of the Atlian religion, and this used to be a Chaldean church. Hmm. Hmm? Is that so? Wait, did you not know that? I'll profess that I did not. The altar was barren when I arrived, so I simply planted flowers that I knew would thrive in that type of soil. Oh. Are you even a priest? How did you not know this was a Chaldean church? Didn't you say you took over the church from the last priest? I did indeed. Then, I mean, at the very least, he would have mentioned the religious sect of the church you were inheriting, right? He did not. Our conversation was cut rather short. A chill suddenly runs up my spine. Cut short? Hmm. Um, how was it cut short? Well, he had to leave in a hurry. I'm not sure what about. Our conversation was rather short, all in all. Hmm. Hmm? Are you even a priest? I do not believe I ever stated such. Uh, then, then what are you? I'm a gardener. He gives me another smile. It's kind of cute. Wait, what am I thinking? I hope that won't be an issue. Hmm. Dr. Frank... No, I, uh, I just assumed. But 
You were a priest. Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Frank, why are you apologizing? It was my own fault for not being clear in my introductions. I'm afraid to say that I won't be preaching any sermons here. I'm sorry if you frequented this church. I wouldn't attend a church even if you paid me. Oh, well, my not giving any sermons should pose no issue. I know that a few of the villagers were sad to see the last priest go. But they won't have to wait long before the next priest arrives. Wait, what? I'm just stopping through. Oh, you're not staying. Why am I feeling sad all of a sudden? Well, that all depends on how things turn out. There's a chance that I won't be here for long. Hmm. Oh, so we gotta make this guy stay. Hmm. Why are you even here? <laughs> so direct. Well, I heard a rumor, and I decided to investigate. That's all. What rumor? I love the way your glasses bring out the color of your eyes. Huh? Oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? How embarrassing. Hmm. Uh, are you flirting with me? Are you f flirting with me? Oh, am I? You keep telling me I'm cute. Forgive me if this is causing you any distress. I can stop if you want. Hmm. Dr. Frank, would you like me to stop? Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> All right. Oh, kind of want to talk more about him. My, do you like talking to me that much? Wait a minute, you didn't answer my question. Oh, how rude of me. What question was it? What rumor were you here investigating? Mm. My, your hair is such a cute shade of pink. I wonder if it feels as fluffy as it looks. Uh, wh what? Dr. Frank, are you feeling all right? You're turning a strange shade of red. G uh, shut up! He's too strong for me. What would make you leave the garden? <laughs> you have an interesting look on your face there, Dr. Frank. Yeah, so... Um, hypothetically, if something big happened, would you leave? Excuse me? Mm -mm. Uh, I mean, like... If something happened, would you go check it out? Well, I suppose. Great. <laughs> hmm. So, what things would you leave for? Dr. Frank, do you want me to leave? Oh, no, no, I'm not saying that at all. Then why are you asking me this? No reason. Absolutely no reason. <laughs> I, I need to dig up these graves, sir. Hmm. Yeah, so I might have to... <sighs> yeah. Holding my nose, I put it in my inventory. Achoo! Ah, this sucks. I'm sorry. <whistles> Don't mind me, just you and re weed grow killer on your plants. I quickly dump all of the powder on the roses, trying my hardest not to breathe in the dust. Vines, lion's manes, and other weeds start popping up immediately, covering up the roses that were there before. That'll do it. Now just to let this get Silios away from the graves. But first I should save my game. Oh, Silios! Your roses, your roses, sir. Hey, Silios, I saw a whole bunch of weeds in the church. They were in that little box with your roses. Mm -hmm. Well, then I suppose I need to leave this area completely unattended and go into the church. He winks at me and rushes off. Alright, time for some digging. I move to dig in when something strong grabs the end of my shovel. Oh dear. Papa! But boyfriend me too, me too. He grabs the shovel and starts digging in the grave. Even with only a single hand, he puts to shame my own progress. He wanted to come find you. It's eggs for some reason. I'm happy to see him. Oh, so cute. What a great boyfriend. Wait, did anyone see him? 
Dr. Frank, you live in a nigh impenetrable mountain range. No, no one saw him. Oh, good, good. Ah. Oh. It seemed that the monster had found something while digging. Iggs walks over to pick up the severed arm that he quickly reburied in the wee hours of the morning. Now how did we get this on again? My assistant starts to hand me a stapler for the arm, but then pulls back after a second thought. Are you sure about this, Dr. Frank? Uh, what? Come on, we have to get going. Give me the stapler. I mean, you're doing this all to get back at Dominic, right? Have you been paying any attention? I'm taking my revenge on him and those stupid university types who- Right, I just- I think you're putting too much energy into this. Too much? I reach out for the stapler, but he pulls back. So you get your revenge, and then what? I reach out again, but he dodges me. Dr. Frank, then what? Then? Then I'll be happy, and they'll recognize what amazing work I've done, and- Again, I reach for the stapler, but to no avail. Eggs, we don't have time for this! When will you have time for this, Dr. Frank? I tried to ask you two days ago, and a week before that, but you kept- You keep avoiding the question. Mm. What are you going to do now, after you take your revenge? Well, then everyone will love me, and they'll accept me back into the university, and Dominic will be so destroyed that he'll have to leave the country. <sighs> and what if that doesn't happen? Iggs is a very good therapist. Hmm. Dr. Frank? I... I don't know, Iggs. <sighs> now can you please give me the Don Stapler? He hands it to me, and I take it without looking him in the eye. Arm! Arm! How how will he move the arm? I quickly reattach it, as best to my abilities. Now he's ready for the conference. And only a few minutes to spare until the presentation starts. Let's go. We arrive before Dominic's presentation, the conference brimming with people. To think that all of these people would have been looking upon my research. At me! If only things have been different. If only Susie hadn't had that one unfortunate encounter with Headmaster Aram. If only that professor hadn't threatened to report my work to the Queen's men. I could have been up there. Ugh, now where is that a-hole? Just then, the current presenter goes behind the curtains, and for a split second I can see a certain brown-haired man I could never forget. That a-hole! I charge off, pushing through the crowd, Iggs and the monster on my heels. We make it back behind the stage, just in the nick of time. You! He sees me, and takes a step back. Oh, wow. What are you doing here, Frankfurter? Gah! Yeah, what am I doing here? I'm- I'm here to take my revenge! Hmm? Dude, what? You- you stole my research! Everything I worked so hard for, and now you're presenting it to these people and- and- Uh, what? Bro, can we talk about this later? I'm like five minutes away from doing this thing. Gah, flip you! You broke my heart! Dude, are you still hung up about that? Well, I gave your shoes to my monster, so they are- mm. What? What? I mean, it was like, what? Two weeks? Tops? Well, forget you, and now, now I have someone even better. I glance behind me to present my new and better improved boyfriend, but he's still off in the crowds, him and Iggs fighting to slip behind the stage. I made, I made an entirely new creature, a new life form. He's, he's better than you, he's more handsome and more affectionate and listens to me when I speak, and he's just a million times better than you in every way. Mm. Cool, so I'm gonna go do my presentation now. B -b but aren't you intimidated? Speechless at how I completely moved on from you, and you were nothing but a mistake? Yeah, that's cool, bro, so I'm gonna go do my presentation. He turns to leave, but I follow on his heels. Your awesome research? Don't you mean my awesome research? You stole it from me. That's... that's why I'm doing all this, you see. Taking my revenge. 
Yours? Um, I mean, it's based on your research, but it's still my experiment. Don't worry, I cited you in the bibliography on the paper. Suddenly, the crowd starts clapping and a man pulls back the curtain, motioning for Dominic to go on stage. Uh, look, I gotta go. But that's my research! I rush to stop him from going out there, from claiming my, my research as his own. But just then... Mr. Frank! Uh-oh. Oh dear. <laughs> Is he missing an arm? Yeah, he's missing an arm. Didn't even give him a cool hook or anything? He's a headmaster, he should have a hook. I turn around to see Headmaster Aaron. What the heck are you doing here? Uh-oh. Iggs has finally caught up with the monster, both out of breath. And what the heck is that? He gestures towards the monster, who's just staring at his missing hand. You, you people, you fools, stand back. I, I did the impossible. I have an incredible experiment that will revolutionize the nature of humanity. I created... I created the world's first artificial life form. And I'm going to go out there and change this loveless, cruel world. That man, he stole my research. My research, you hear me? I'm not going to let any of you step all over me again. Mr. Frank, Mr. Nileon is an esteemed member of our doctrine program, and any such claims of plagiarism are to be taken seriously. If you truly wish to pursue this further, and this isn't yet again another one of your outbursts, you can take this up with... Just then, the crowd burst out in sound from the other side of the curtains, and I turned to look. There's a bird flying around out there. Somehow, he'd been able to reanimate it. Gods help us. All of a sudden, people start moving. Stagehands are running off whispering amongst themselves. Don't mention this creation you've brought with you to anyone, Mr. Frank. What? What? But I'm here to present... Would you shut up for once? The Queen herself is in attendance tonight. Is she? It's been all over the papers. Yeah, it did say something about a Queen in the papers. Ah. Suddenly, a few armored guards rush past, shoving their way onto the stage where a bewildered Dominique stands. The headmaster pulls me back, further out of the sight lines of the ominous-looking guardsman. Look, Mr. Frank, we have tolerated a lot of your shenanigans in the past. Despite what we have told you multiple times regarding the legality of your work. But what is invention in the face of... Despite multiple warnings, you have continued to pursue illegal research, and now you have passed that same illegal research onto one of our students. Mm. The guardsmen have begun to round up stagehands, lining them up next to Dominic, most likely to arrest them. If you don't say anything, they won't arrest you too. T two? Some yelling breaks out from the stage. It's Dominic, yelling at the guardsmen. One of them pushes the other, and suddenly the three of them are fighting. Oh. Our eyes lock. <laughs> it's not mine. It's, it's his. He makes a lunge towards me, but... One of the guardsmen hit him, and he falls to the ground. Ha! I suggest you leave. Ugh. People have started to scream. What in the world is even going on out in the audience? Dr. Frank, we need to go! But my revenge? Iggs grabs my hand and pulls me away. Oh, snap. We make it out of town just in time. There are fires dotting the horizon in the direction of Hindenburg University. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> hmm. We're lucky to have escaped, you know. Hmm. Ooh. Butterfly. The monster runs off to chase an insect. Hmm. So, what now, Dr. Frank? Hmm. Now that the university has realized the error of its ways and Dominic has been forced out of the country. Oh yeah, he, he did want that to happen. And that everyone loves you and nothing bad will ever happen again. I don't know, okay? Ugh. 
I don't know what the heck I'm going to do now. The university will never accept me now. I glance toward the fires that have broken out in town. And that a-hole, he didn't even... <gasps> Can I make a suggestion? Ugh. Since you didn't say no. You've grown up in this town your whole life, right? The mansion was your grandmother's, from what I remember. So what? So, this is your hometown, and it's the only place you've ever lived. Hmm. And maybe it would be good to get some perspective. I mean, everyone here knows that you're the weird guy who lives in a creepy mansion in the woods and is obsessed with illegal research. You don't have to put it that way. There's a program I know just over the border in a Springtown that specializes in plant regeneration. My boyfriend went to university there and mentioned it. I know it's not, uh, exactly the same research as what you've been doing, but you could probably find some use for it in your own experiments. Wait a minute. The other guy also said he's a gardener. They're both gardeners! Come on now! So what, are you saying I should just, I don't know, go there instead? Well, yes. So I would have to go to a completely different country to even find a place that would recognize my genius? Dr. Frank. I'm saying maybe it's time to get out of your house and stop obsessing over your revenge. Over making other people like you. Not to mention if you managed to blow up a laboratory building again, it would be much easier to avoid the repercussions if it happened in another country. But the people of a springtone are so stuffy and snotty and... Ah, watch your step. Butterfly. Butterfly. The monster comes charging over again, chasing a bug that is clearly not a butterfly. It's not. Just then I realize that Silios has followed the monster over to us. Ah, uh, uh. Oh, I see we meet again, Dr. Frank. Uh, can we help you with anything? Papa! Butterfly! Pretty! Oh, I just happened to see your cute child here running through the church grounds. I was a bit worried about him falling into a ditch, or even one of the unearthed graves. <laughs> the unearthed graves. I haven't a clue as to where they came from. Mm -mm. Oh, and also, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but were you discussing a springtown? A spinkton? A spinkton? Oh, uh, yeah, we were. I'm actually from a spinkton, originally, in fact. If there's anything you need to know, I would love to help. Mm. That's very generous of you, but it was just a thought. I'm not sure if Dr. Frank is even going to move there. Yes, I would love to know. Please tell me everything. <laughs> very well. Feel free to ask me anything, Dr. Frank. Butterfly. Pretty. What, what is he chasing if it's not a butterfly? The, the monster shoves a dead insect into my face. At a later time, of course. We ought to be getting back to the house. R right. I wave goodbye to Celios as we head back up the mountain. Ooh. Two months later. No. Oh. Ask me that question again. Um, where do you see yourself in ten years? Having cracked the code of animal regeneration and about to be entering clinical trials on testing on humans. Maybe you should leave out the human experimentation part, Dr. Frank. But otherwise, great. I think you're ready to go. Hmm, do I look okay? Maybe put more gel in your hair? There's no way there's going to stay down for the whole trip over there. But I've already used the whole jar. Oh, maybe just try not to touch it then. Sure enough, moments later, my hair reverts back to its original form. Ah, so much for that. Don't worry about your hair, Dr. Frank. I'm sure you'll do fine. Ah, yeah, if you say so. Are you ready to go? I think Silios will be here in a few minutes. He's helping you cross the border, right? Hmm... Dr. Frank? Uh? You seem kind of out of it there for a second. I don't know. 
still feeling apprehensive. Hmm. I just... What if I'm making a fool of myself? Or they already know who I am and are just going to reject me anyway. It would be pretty cruel to invite someone to an interview if you know you're just going to reject them anyway. And even if that were the case, that would say more about them than about you, right? If you say so. I'm just... I don't know. <sighs> I keep thinking maybe it would be better to just stay home and work on experiments. I just feel so weird to be doing... this. Why? Because, I mean, I don't normally do this, you know? It's dumb. I'm sure I look dumb to other people. I have better things to do than dress up fancy and have people with inferior intellects tell me what to think. What did we say about your manners? Oh, sorry. It won't come out in the interview. Good. Hmm. Just give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? I suppose... I take a deep breath. Yeah, at least I can gain some intel as to the Aspington scientific process while I'm over there. And you won't be alone, either. I'm sure Cilios can help you get to where you need to be. Mm. Suddenly, there's a knock at the front door. Visitor! Visitor! Ah, oh, monster, don't open that! Too late. He's already rushing off to open the door. Ah, well, at least we know who's at the door this time. Are you ready, Dr. Frank? I happened to glance at my reflection in the mirror. I set my face into a determined look. It's something to try, if nothing else. A way to waste time. But I have no idea what's going to happen. Maybe something will, maybe not. And although I don't want to admit it to Wiggs, the act of having something to do besides trying to impress a university that had turned its back on me felt like a breath of fresh air. I smile. Ready as I'll ever be. <gasps> the end. Oh, that was adorable. That was such a sweet story. Oh, that was a nice story. I like that story. Yeah, Cilios and the Doctor are totally going to become best buddies. They're probably going to get married. <laughs> well, that was Dr. Frank's Build-A-Boyfriend. And that was pretty silly. That was pretty fun. I like that. I like that. The Doctor's adorable. Ooh, wait a minute. Extras? Secret ending? The secret ending will have to wait. <laughs> now we can go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope.